This video is the second of a series of videos about the basics of broadcast. And we'll be talking about content acquisition, content transport, content delivery, content distribution, and then content consumption. I'm Marcus O'Rourke. I've been a broadcast engineer for 20 years, over 20 years in the Los Angeles area. Now I'm in Denver doing content distribution and doing this channel here for you. So we're talking about content acquisition in this video. And content acquisition is basically your studio. The studio is where everything comes in. You're acquiring all the, all the content that you're gonna be making. I know I'm using this same term over and over, but we're talking about microphones, automation, codecs from doing remotes, phone calls, and then you have legacy equipment like CD players, cart machines, reel-to-reel -reel machines, cassette players, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At the basic of, of radio studio is either a microphone and a transmitter or um, automation system and a transmitter or something very simple like that. Now let's talk about microphones because most studios will have a microphone. So a microphone is a device that converts sound like what I'm speaking into electrical signals. I have a microphone right here and it's taking my voice and converting it, converting the vibrations in the air to electrical signals, which is being recorded and picked up and basically reconverted when you get it back into vibrations in the air. There's different types of microphones and each microphone type has a different sound, has a different style to it, a different flavor. Uh, you have generally two different types that you're gonna find in a radio station, a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone. And both have their pros and cons with content acquisition. So a, a dynamic microphone is going to have better rejection of sound in the space. For example, if you have uh, untreated walls or if you have noise that comes in from the street through a window, a dynamic microphone is going to do better at rejecting that than a condenser will. Now, a condenser microphone is going to sound better with reproducing the voice. It's gonna sound more natural. It's gonna sound more uh, real, but a condenser microphone is gonna pick up the sound of a flea jumping 14 miles away or something like that. It kind of joking, but it is a very sensitive microphone. In this instance right here, what I'm doing is I'm using a shotgun microphone, which is very similar to a condenser microphone but we're not gonna to get too deep into microphones. That's a whole nother topic. Uh, but a, a microphone will color the way that a voice sounds. But really, the important thing is a microphone captures the voice and converts that into electrical signals, which will then go into your console and we'll get there. Moving on to the next item. Today, automation is really the heart of the radio station. And it's basically a computer that has a playlist that plays audio out, whether it's music files or long form talk programming. There's many different manufacturers of automation systems, some that are free, some that cost a good chunk of change. It's a definitely an investment. Um, but really the basics of it is all you need is a playlist and then your, your media files. If you're not doing anything crazy, if it's just a very simple playlist that you're looking for, the free versions are probably all you're going to need. Or worst case, the free versions are gonna be perfect for you to play with and try and download and experiment with. But um, if you need more of the intricate tasks, satellite switching, uh, switching, switching, uh, other different things, background records, all that fun stuff, you're probably going to need one of the more premium options that are out there. And again, automation systems is a whole nother discussion and topic and video, which is outside of today's scope. So let's move on. The next item in your content acquisition part is going to be 
codex. Now, sometimes you're going to have remotes. Say you are at the county fair or you're at some car dealership and you want to have audio coming from that remote end to the studio to get out over the air. And this is where codecs come in. And again, just like with automation systems, there's many different styles and types and manufacturers out there. Now, a codec means encoder, decoder. Typically, it's a bi-directional connection that you're going to have. You're going to have a device at the studio and a device at the remote end. And your remote end, you're probably going to have a couple of microphones at, say, the uh, car dealership or the county fair. And you're going to be interviewing people. But you're going to want to hear what's happening back at the station, if it's commercials or whatnot. So that's where the encoder decoder comes into play. On both sides is an encoder. It converts the audio into compressed stream, sends it to the other side, which has a decoder, which then turns that compressed stream back into audio for you to hear, and then vice versa. The remote end has an encoder to take your microphones, send it back to the studio, decode it into regular audio, and out into your console out onto the air. Um, I've had good experiences with several different types and, and manufacturers. You have Comrex, they have the Bricklink, they have the Access, you have Gates Air with the IP, uh, IP100-200 series. Uh, you have Telos with their Zip1. They each have their benefits and their drawbacks, pros and cons. And it all depends on what you're trying to do and what you want to do. Now we can come back to Codex when we talk about content transport later on. But for today, content acquisition, your codex. Now you're, you're also probably going to want to have phone calls coming in. Uh, if you're having a, a talk show, a, a local community affairs show, and you're taking comments from the public, well, they're going to call in on the phone and you're going to want to be able to take those phone calls. So you have what's called a hybrid. And in the old days, the way that the phone system worked, you only had two wires. And so you had to be able to separate your incoming audio from the outgoing audio because if your outgoing audio came back, you have this thing called a feedback loop. Bad stuff, basically. So you have a hybrid. Now today, it's all voice over IP, VoIP. And so like things like Vonage or uh, Ring Central or whatever. And so a hybrid has less to do with making that um, cancellation, but it does do a lot. It does convert, it, it converts the VoIP signal into audio that you can hear and interact with and then converts your audio back into VoIP signal back to the caller. Um, and then you have your legacy equipment. Things like CD players. Yes, I know, I am of the CD generation. And to, for me to say that CDs are legacy equipment, oh my gosh, I feel so old. But then again, you might still find CD players in some markets. Some studios might just have that CD player sitting off on the side just in case. You never know. Um, but things like reel-to-reel, -reel, uh, tape, uh, vinyl, there are some old studios, if you look at you know, the consoles in, or pictures of old studios, you'll see the DJs there spinning the records. Now, all of those sources, including those legacy sources, CDs, are gonna come into a mixer or a console. And before we get into that and start talking about that, let's hear from one of our sponsors today, Broadcast Depot. Now, Broadcast Depot, since 1999, has served their clients globally with unmatched broadcasting solutions. Their certified engineers offer expert planning, engineering, and support tailored to your unique needs. With comprehensive training and ongoing support, Broadcast Depot guarantees efficient, reliable performance. Their commitment to excellence makes them a leader in the industry, dedicated to client success every step of the way. Learn more at 7BD.com or call them at 305-599-3100. 
Thank you, Broadcast Depot, for sponsoring today's video. Hi, I'm gonna take a moment here and recognize the sponsor of today's video, LinkUp Communications. When your content has to get to your audience, you can count on their content distribution using XDS and other industry-leading platforms. LinkUp has provided distribution solutions with the highest degree of reliability for over three decades. They bring old school network experience to your products. And while LinkUp was built on satellite delivery, they're not strangers to the emerging world of internet delivery. The XDS platform can utilize both satellite and terrestrial IP delivery to provide that extra layer of assurance that your content will get to where you need it. And that's why the largest radio news organization and many up and coming talk shows are choosing to distribute their programs through LinkUp. If you're wanting more information about their services or just who are they, visit their website at linkupcommunications.com. And now, back to the video. Before the break, we were talking about consoles or mixers. Now, in radio, we do call this a console because in the old days, it was a console. It was this big thing that was the centerpiece of the studio. And it had these big knobs and meters and all this stuff. Uh, but a console is typically a physical device that has channels and buses. Yes, I know there are virtual mixers out there now, virtual consoles. We'll cover that later on in a different video. But for today, we're talking about the physical ones that have channels and knobs and things like that. Now, channels are typically the sources of audio that we just talked about. Microphones, uh, automation computers, uh, CD players, codecs, phones, etc., etc., etc. These are sometimes called faders or pots. Why do we call them pots? Not like, you know, a flower pot. We're talking about potentiometers. So in the old days, in the older consoles, when it was straight audio, they have a potentiometer and that changes electrical characteristics of the signal to raise and lower the volume. And that's why they ended up being called pots. And it just has kind of stuck as you start dealing with um, more radio people. You'll find some of them call them pots, some of them call them faders. It really depends on what their experience was, but channels, faders, pots, all the same thing. A channel is typically laid out in like a strip. It's a vertical thing. You'll have sometimes like a fader, which is why they call them faders, or uh, you'll have a fader or maybe a knob. Some of the older ones will have knobs. Um, and then you'll have some buttons for assigning them to buses, which we'll talk about, uh, knobs to uh, change the volume of sending it to different buses or options of changing characteristics of the sound, maybe EQing the audio or changing compression on the audio or there's lots of different options. But at basic, the basic, basic, basic part of a broadcast console is your fader or knob, which is the, the signal, the loudness, the volume of that source, and then a button of where you're sending that audio, which bus you're sending that audio. Typically, you're gonna have like a program one and an audition bus and a cue bus or a preview bus. So that's kind of how it's laid out. Channels are going to be the input of the console and buses are going to be the output of the channel. That's kind of how you can think of channels and buses. Channels input, buses output. Now, it the bus will take all those sources of audio that you have assigned to it, say program one, and it's gonna mix all those together and then output that to your transmitter, to your studio to transmitter link, um, your encoder for your internet stream, whatever you have it set to. You kind of have to think of it like a bus full of passengers, kind of why it's called a bus. So you have this bus and your passengers are all the sources of audio that you have turned on and brought up 
and assigned to that bus. Radio consoles are different than live mix consoles. So if you go to a concert, you'll see live mix consoles and those will typically have lots of faders and lots of knobs all over the place. And that's because the difference in the tasks that need to be done by the operator. In radio, you're not changing the EQ. You're not changing the characteristics of the sound of the source of audio. You're just presenting that audio to be played out on the air. In a live mix situation, they're changing the, the characteristics of the sound. EQ, they're changing the bass or the treble or the compression and how loud it is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You may have heard the phrase, make sure that it's in program. And that is probably going to be one of the more common reasons why uh, you're off the air, is that you have it in preview and you think that it's, you hear it and it's not really assigned to program one to go out over the air. I've done it, I will admit, I have done that. Um, and I'm pretty sure Every person in radio has done that at least once in their career. And if they say they haven't, they're lying to you. I'm going to say that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're lying to you. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> uh, and it's one of those things where when you do it, you kind of just go, I can't believe I did that. So first thing, if you don't, if you don't see it on the meters going or you know, you're off the air, Make sure that it's assigned to program, program one. Making sure the channel is turned on. Making sure the fader is pushed up. Those are kind of all the basic things to make sure. So anyways, that program bus, like I said, will go to your studio to transmitter link. It'll go out to your transmitter. It'll go to your encoder for live streaming. That's kind of your content acquisition side of uh, the radio station. And I think this is gonna be a good place to stop uh, for this uh, group of content. We're just touching the basics. We're just touching these concepts and we'll drill into them later after the this series is done. So again, this is our content acquisition video. To, uh, next video is gonna be content transport where we talk about the way of getting your content from the studio, from the acquisition side to the transmitter to the data center. We'll cover that next time. In the meantime, if you want to know more about radio stations, uh, the studios themselves, to see, uh, I've done some tours of some studios. So I'm going to put those right up uh, here. So they're going to be right up here, radio studios. And transmitter sites right here, because that's the other part of the radio station is the transmitter site. All right, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning, and we'll see you in the next video.